Hello, good afternoon, everybody. 大家下午好。So welcome to the Mandarin English bilingual story. 欢迎你们来到子宫英双文故事时间。My name is Xiao Mei. 我的名字呢叫做双妹。And I'm the library assistant at the San Carlos Library. 我是在圣卡洛斯图书馆工作的馆员。So San Carlos Library is part of the San Mateo Curies. 然后呢，圣马雕圣卡洛斯图书馆呢，圣马雕西图书馆之一。But now the library, uh, the library is closed. Open as an. 现在图书馆虽然关门了，但是一直为您开放。So please visit our website. For online resources and online activities, so you know, please download our website to understand our online resources and online activities. So, if you have any questions, you are welcome to text us, send us email, or also call us. That if you have any questions, you can send us a WhatsApp message, or call us directly. So, you can find all the information on our website. Then, all the information is on our website. All right, thank you, 谢谢 All right, so before the story starts, I'm going to tell you what I'm going to use for the story time. All right. 那讲故事以前呢，我告诉你我会用到什么道具哦。I'm going to use scarves. 我会用丝巾。Oh, you can use your clothes. 或者你可以用你的衣服。And I will use a shaker. 我会用一个摇摇器。And also, I'm going to use my friend Teddy Bear. Or you can use a soft toys. 或者呢，我是用我的泰迪熊。如果你没有泰迪熊呢，你可以拿一个很软的玩具。All right. So please grab your tools while we sing the first song. All right. 现在呢，我给你时间去，你把这些道具可以拿过来。然后呢，我们唱这个第一首歌。So are you ready? 准备好了吗 ？So the song is called Good Afternoon Song. 是要午安歌 ，OK。So you're gonna clap your hand on your side and clap your hand together like this. All right. 拍拍大腿，然后拍拍手。OK. We count one, two, three. One, two, three. 一、二、三。Good afternoon, everybody. How are you? Clap, clap. Good afternoon, everybody. How are you? Clap, clap. We are glad you're here today on this special day. Good afternoon, everybody. How are you? Clap, clap. All right, 好棒 OK, now sing in Mandarin. 我们唱中文版喽 OK. 午安，大家好。午安，拍拍手。午安，大家好。午安，拍拍手。很高兴看到你在这特别的一天。午安，大家好。午安。拍拍手，耶，上了班。OK， good afternoon again。下午好。OK， all right。So the second song， because now it's afternoon， how about we do some afternoon stretch？ 那既然现在是下午时间，我们应该做一下下午的伸展运动。All right。So I'm gonna sing a song called This the way we hop hop hop。So I'm gonna use the same tune of This the way we wash our face。All right, so we're gonna start with the this the way we wash our face. Then we transition to the song called "This the way we hop hop hop." How about that? 然后我们会唱一首歌，是我们这样跳跳跳。但是呢，我们这个歌的曲调呢是跟我们这样洗洗脸是一个曲调。所以呢，我们先唱我们这样洗洗脸一部分，然后呢，就换成我们这样跳跳跳。All right, ready? So we start with. It's the way we wash our face. Ready? It's the way we wash our face. Wash our face. Wash our face. It's the way we wash our face. So early in the morning. It's the way we comb our hair. Comb our hair. Comb our hair. It's the way we comb our hair. So early in the morning. Now we're gonna change now. Ready? It's the way we hop 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 hop. It's the hop 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 all day long, right? All right. So how about we run? It's the way we run, 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 run. It's the way we run, run, run all day long. So silly, right? 
Okay, how should we do? How about we clap hands? It's the way we clap our hands, clap our hands, clap our hands. It's the way we clap our hands all day long. Silly, silly. All right, excellent. All right, 好，我们先唱那个，我们这样洗洗脸，然后呢，换成这个动作歌，好不好？ All right, ready? 准备好了吗？我们这样洗洗脸，洗洗脸，洗洗脸。我们这样洗洗脸，一大清早。梳头发。我们这样梳头发，梳头发，梳头发。我们这样梳头发，一大清早。好，转换喽。我们这样跳跳跳，跳跳跳，跳跳跳。我们这样跳跳跳。一整天哦，很傻，对不对？要跳一整天。All right, how about 跳跑跑跑？我们这样跑跑跑，跑跑跑，跑跑跑。我们这样跑跑跑，一整天。哦，这很傻，我们不可以跑一整天，对不对 ？All right， 现在是拍拍手了。我们这样拍拍手，拍拍手。拍拍手，我们这样拍拍手一整天。Oh no, the whole day! <笑>不可以一整天呐、啊。OK， 这样很傻，对不对 ？All right, we just have fun. 我们只是觉得好玩。All right, so we do some afternoon stretch. 我们已经做了那个下午的伸展运动喽。So now, how about we do some cooking? Are you hungry? 那现在我们不如做一些东西来吃。你肚子饿吗？好 ，OK. I think so. Right? I'm hungry. 我肚子饿了。How about we do some popcorn and also make some dumpling? 那我们不如去做一些爆米花，还有包饺子。OK. Are you ready? 准备好了吗 ？OK. Can you get your shaker? 你可以把你的摇摇器拿过来吗 ？OK. So one, two, three, 一、二、三。Popcorn kernels, popcorn kernels, stir in the pot, stir in the pot. Shoot them up, shoot them up until they pop. Excellent. All right. So I'm gonna give you a little surprise later. Okay, let's sing one more time. 再唱一遍 Popcorn kernels, popcorn kernels, stir in the pot, stir in the pot. Shoot them up, shoot them up until they. Ha! All right. What do you see? Those are my paper buttons. Until they. Okay. Excellent. 好棒 Okay. Now, how about we sing the song called "Ah,、uh, 包饺子 for some dumpling." All right. So you need to chop the radish, pan fry the radish, put everything into the dumpling wrap, fold them, and then pinch the edge to make the. In Chinese, okay. 包饺子，准备好了吗 ？All right. 炒萝卜，炒萝卜，切切切。包饺子，包饺子，捏捏捏。好孩子，好孩子，顶呱呱，呱呱呱呱呱呱呱呱呱。You're gonna take care yourself. Okay, excellent. Let's sing one more time. 再来一遍，好不好 ？Okay. 炒萝卜，炒萝卜，切切切。包饺子，包饺子，捏捏捏。好孩子，好孩子，顶呱呱，呱呱呱呱呱呱呱呱呱呱。OK， 很好棒，好棒。All right, I think and now it's time to read our story. So this book will talk about caterpillars and also butterflies. 然后这本书讲呢，就是有关毛毛虫。毛毛虫，还有呢，蝴蝶。OK， so I'm going to share my book with you. 我会跟你分享我的书。OK， just one minute. 先等一下。All right， the book is coming. All right. Let me make some setting real quick. OK， 把东西弄一下，很快就好了。紧张。Okay, so I check out this book from Overdrive. That means Libby. All right. 然后我这本书呢是从呃 Libby 或者说 Overdrive 那里借出来的 e-book. So you can check out e-book from Libby also. All right. 你你也可以从 Libby 那里呢借网上的电子书 All right. So this book is called Pete the Cat, 
and the cool caterpillar. 然后这本书的名字叫做《皮特猫》，呃，很酷的毛毛虫。By James Dean and all also illustrated by James Dean. 作者和绘画师呢都是 James Dean and published by Harper Collins Publishers. 出版社呢是 Harper Collins, uh, Publishers. Okay, I'm happy. We can start. Oh, where is Pete? Do you see Pete? No, Pete, Mama. Yeah, okay. Pete is on rock safari. Pete, Mama, 在野外找虫子。虫子在哪呢？我们找啊找。He and his friends are looking for bugs. How many bugs can they find? 然后呢？他跟他的朋友呢，在找虫子。那他们能找到多少几只虫子呢 ？OK， let's find out。我们看一下哦。哦，好，这只虫子是 tiny black ant。It's building an ant hill， she says。Gooey， says Pete。然后呢？这个叫做 Collie 的猫猫呢，找到了一只很小的黑色的蚂蚁。他说：“你快来看，快来看，他们在建一座蚂蚁山。Oh, ”哦，皮特猫说：“嗯，好棒，真的好棒。” Got finds a one red ladybug in the mint patch. It has nine spots, says Got. Nice, says Pete. 然后呢 ？Do you see the the ladybug? Do you see it? 你看到那个瓢虫吗？然后 Gut 呢找到了一只瓢虫，它是红红的、圆圆的。它在它躲在那个薄荷薄荷树里面，从树丛里面。哦，我看到了，它有九个斑点。那个他的朋友说：“哦，好漂亮哦。”皮特猫说。What do you see here? 这里看到什么 ？Spider and a what? A fly. Oh my! 这里有什么呢？这里有一只蜘蛛，还有什么？苍蝇。Marty sees a big black spider. It caught a fly. He says, "Neat." That's it. 要 Marty 猴子呢？他找到了一只黑色的、很大的蜘蛛。而且呢，蜘蛛网上呢有一只苍蝇。哦、oh, ，真棒！皮特猫说 ，He finds a green caterpillar in the flower pot. I will bring it home to show mom and dad. He says. 然后皮特猫呢找到了一条绿色的毛毛虫在那个花盆里面。然后他说，啊、哦，我要把它带回家给爸爸和妈妈看。Now, can you help me to help me find the caterpillar? You 现在可以帮我找一下那个毛毛虫吗 ？Where is the caterpillar? 毛毛虫在哪呢 ？Let's look. Oh, you see it? Okay, 在这里，毛毛虫在这里。Excellent, 好棒。Mom helps Pete build a home for the caterpillar. They use a big drum. 然后妈妈呢，帮 Peter 呢。给那个毛毛虫建了一个家，他们就用那个什么很大的玻璃玻璃瓶。That puts lots of little holes in the lid for air. Bam, 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 bam. 然后呢，爸爸用锤子呢，在那个盖子上面钉了很多小孔来透气。Pete puts the caterpillar in the jar. 然后呢，皮特呢，皮特猫把那个毛毛虫放在那个玻璃罐里面，耶，好棒 ，excellent. Oh, what do you think the caterpillar is hungry? 毛毛虫会饿吗 ？I think so. 我觉得它会肚子饿。So what can we do? 怎么办呢 ？So Pete put some leaves in the jar for the caterpillar to eat. Yum, so good. He adds a twig for it to grow on. Yay! Then, then, Peter Mouse, then, put some leaves, then, put in the jar, for the caterpillar to eat. Yum! 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 Yum!
，而且呢，他给他一根小树枝一样的爬来爬去，爬上爬下。嗯，好棒。Good night, Pete says Mom. Good night, Pete says Dad. Good night, Caterpillar says Peter. 然后呢，妈妈说，彼得猫晚安。爸爸说，彼得猫晚安。他说：“毛毛虫，晚安。” Okay, so they all went to sleep. 他们全都睡觉了。When Pete wakes up, the caterpillar is gone. Oh no! Where did it go? Did it run away? 但是等彼得猫醒来的时候呢，毛毛虫不见了。它可以去哪呢？难道它逃跑了？嗯。I think about it. 我们想一下。It is not gone, says Mom. It did not run away, says Dad. Look, they said. Okay. 然后妈妈说它没有消失掉。爸爸说它没有跑走、逃走。然后他们说，看，有这样新的东西 ，a new thing. I see. This part. What's that? 你看到这个东西吗？这是什么呢？ The caterpillar is inside there," says Mom. "It's called a pupa." 然后呢，妈妈说，你知道吗？毛毛虫就在那个蛹里面。这个东西呢，这个东西呢，就叫做蛹。Oh, I got it. Oh, 我知道了，我知道了。Will it stay in there forever? It's asked. 那它会待在里面？一整年吗？永远待在里面吗？不出来吗 ？No, says that. The caterpillar is changing into something new. 当然不会啦，它会变成一样新的生物。Oh, what will it become? Pete asked. It's a surprise, says Mom. We must wait and see. 然后呢，皮特猫就问了，那它会变成什么生物呢？这是一个惊喜哦，我们一定要耐心等待，它就会出现咯。Pete wait. Collie comes to visit. Did it come out yet? She asked. Not yet, says Pete. 然后呢，皮特就很耐心等待，然后他的朋友卡里呢？就过来拜访。他说：“哎，那个毛毛虫从那个蛹里面出来了没有？”皮特猫说：“没有，还没有。” Pete wait some more. Gus comes to visit. Did it come out yet? He asked. Not yet, says Pete. 然后呢，皮特猫呢，要很耐心的等待。然后他的朋友 Gus 过来拜访，然后 Gus 就问：“哎，毛毛虫出来了吗？”然后皮特猫说：“没有。” Pete waits even longer. Marty comes to visit. Did it come out yet? He asked. Not yet, says Pete. 然后呢，皮特猫很耐心的又等了等。然后呢，他的朋友马蒂过来拜访。马蒂问：“哎，毛毛虫出来了吗？”“还没有。”皮特猫说：“嗯嗯，还没有。” Pete waits and waits and waits. Then one day, something finally happens. 然后呢，皮特猫很耐心的等啊。等啊，等啊，然后有一天，哦，该发生的终于还是要发生了，耶、yeah, ，好棒 ，OK， let's find out what happened， OK， 我们看看会发生什么事情 ，what will happen， I， the pupa starts to wiggle， something is happening， says it wiggles some more， everyone comes all to watch。然后呢，那个蛹呢，开始摇啊摇啊摇。哎，皮特猫说有事情要发生哦。然后呢，那个蛹在摇啊摇啊摇，更厉害了。然后呢，全家人都跑过来看了
The pill pack cracks open. <gasps> Something is coming out. What can it be? Then, the pill pack is open. The pill pack cracks open. Something is coming out. What can it be? Then, the pill pack is open. The pill pack cracks open. Okay, let's see. Oh, the head pops out. <gasps> then some eggs, and then two colorful wings. <gasps> oh, we can see a head coming out. Then some legs. Then there are two what? Two very red wings. Oh, the caterpillar changed into a beautiful butterfly. Wow, says the kids. 原来呀，毛毛虫已经变成了一只很漂亮的蝴蝶。彼得说，彼得毛说，天呀，好棒 ！The butterfly slowly moves its wings up. And down, it's ready to fly. 然后呢，他们看着那个玻璃罐里的那个蝴蝶，蝴蝶往上飞呀、啊、飞，往下飞呀、啊、飞。它已经准备好去飞翔了。They take the jar to the park. Time to say goodbye, says Dad. Kit opens the lid of the jar. 然后呢，他们全家人呢就把蝴蝶还有蝴蝶带到了公园。然后爸爸说：“是时候说再见喽。”然后呢，皮特猫把盖子噗打开了。Right. What will happen? 会发生什么事呢 ？The butterfly flaps its wings. It it flutters out of the jar and lands on Pete's nose. That tickles. <laughs> meow, meow, meow. Say he says. 然后呢，蝴蝶拍拍翅膀，然后呢，飞出了那个玻璃瓶，然后落在皮特猫的鼻子上。皮特猫说：“喵喵，好痒，好痒。” Then the butterfly flies up in the sky. Bye, bye, butterfly. Everyone says bye, bye. 然后呢，蝴蝶越飞越高，飞到天空上。然后呢，全家人都说：“蝴蝶再见，再见，再见。” Can you can do you know what Pete's going to do? 你知道皮特猫接着要干嘛 ？Let's find a new caterpillar, says Pete. Change is pretty cool. 然后呢，皮特猫说：“我,我们一起来做一做一条毛毛虫，知道吗？毛毛虫变成蛹，然后变成蝴蝶，真的太棒了！这种改变真的很惊人。All right, can you help me to find the caterpillar? 你可以找到，帮我找那个毛毛虫吗 ？Where's the caterpillar? 在哪呢？毛毛虫在哪呢？” You find it? You 找到了吗 ？Yes, it is here. 在这里，毛毛虫。All right, the end. 讲完了。Excellent. So I'm gonna stop sharing my book. 好，我们已经读完书了。Excellent. Okay. So we're gonna sing a song about butterfly, but it's only in Chinese. 我们会唱一首中文歌，叫做《蝴蝶》。All right. So 只有中文版的。So can you put your hands? Put the thumb together like this. Put finger together and then flap them like butterfly wing. All right. 我们呢把拇指交叉放在一起，然后呢七个手指合起来，拍一拍，一张一合，像蝴蝶的翅膀。好的。蝴蝶，蝴蝶，生得真美丽，头戴着金丝，身穿花花衣。I have a surprise for you. 你爱花，我也爱你啊！<笑>你会跳舞，它又甜蜜。Oh, excellent! So you talk about the flight and dance, and then the flower has a sweetness. They like each other. Okay, ready? One more time. Okay, put your thumb together and then snap your fingers. Ready? 准备好了吗？蝴蝶，蝴蝶，生得真美丽
，头戴着金丝，身穿花花衣。你爱花，我也爱你。你会跳舞 ，You know how to dance。还有甜蜜，老王还在 sweetness， yeah， excellent， 好棒。So we may have sing this song again in the future， all right？ 我们可能会再唱这首歌。So the song is called Butterfly， 蝴蝶。OK， 好棒。All right， so how about we sing the song called Wow Wow Wow？ 要不要 add some fun to the story time？ 那不如我们现在唱这个摇摇摇小船的歌。来玩一下好不好 ？OK， so can you get your scarf ready？ 可以把你的丝巾拿过来喽。OK， I'm going to sit back a little bit。OK， 我们向后坐一点喽。All right， for one, two, three， 一、二、三。哇哇哇，要抱，卷头你当的 stream。Merrily, merrily, 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 like a spider dream。All right, now can you challenge yourself? Can you walk backward? Whoa, 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 your bow, turn it down the stream. If you see an alligator, don't forget to scream. Say alligator. Okay, how about excellent? Okay, now we're gonna sing in Mandarin. Remember, whoa, we say yao. Little bow, we say xiao chuan. Alligator, we say eli. OK， 准备好了吗？摇摇摇小船，努力向后向前摇，努力努力努力努力努力向前摇。来，我背我背向后摇，准备好了吗？摇摇摇小船，努力向后摇，努力努力努力努力努力向后摇。我们穿过阿拉给他。摇摇摇，小船努力向后摇。如果你看见鳄鱼，记得要尖叫一声 ：“Alligator on！” 天呀，鳄鱼来了 ！OK， excellent. So it's almost the end of the story time. It's time to sing our goodbye song. 那时间过得很快呢，故事快要讲完了。我们现在唱我们的再见歌。It's called Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. 歌曲叫做小星星。Okay, ready? Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, how I wonder what you are. Up above the world so high, like a diamond in the sky. Twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are. Okay, now it's time to sing. 小星星 Okay, ready? 一闪一闪亮晶晶，满天都是小星星，挂在天空放光明，好像许多。小眼睛一闪一闪亮晶晶，满天都是小星星。Yeah. All right, so that's the end of the story time. 我们故事讲完了。Thank you for joining me today. 谢谢你们的参与。So my coworker Kelly is going to do her create program at three thirty. So hope to see you there. 然后我的同事 Kelly 呢，在三点半的时候会做他的创意手工活动，期待看到你哦。All right, so I'll see you next time. Bye bye， 下回见喽，再见。
All right, good afternoon, everyone. Hello. Welcome back to my program, Create with Kelly. This is, of course, a virtual program offered by the San Mateo County Libraries. You may have seen me at the East Palo Alto Library. Shout out to all my friends in EPA and throughout the county. And today we've got a really awesome activity. I really love this topic of tie dye, as well as making your own homemade dyes at home. And I'm going to show you all kinds of possibilities, different ways of making uh, tie dye and dyes. So let's go ahead and get into the presentation. And if you see my program, you know, I've already reminded you already, <laughs> but we have a new uh, tech service uh, since Shelter in Place has started. If you have any questions about your library account, you might need some help accessing resources, or you know, just have a question about you know something you're curious about. Uh, Phone number you can reach us at 650-851-0147. And again, that is for sending text messages Monday through Sunday, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. We have staff available. And also, new service that we're offering, uh, we also have a telephone ring ring that you can call and speak to a live human on the phone as well. If you prefer uh, that type of communication, we do offer um, assistance in some other languages too. That phone number 1833-YES-SMCL or in the number form 1833-937-7625. Tell your family, tell your friends. All right, let's get into our topic of tie-dye. Uh, so we're going to be making uh, some dyes today and we'll also be exploring different ways that you can actually tie uh, your t-shirt or a piece of fabric uh, to create different design effects. On the slide here, I have some photos. On the left-hand side, that is a shirt that you will get to see today. Uh, that's all tied up. It doesn't even look like a shirt anymore, hardly, which I think is really cool. <laughs> uh, on the right-hand side, that is a shirt. Go. That's a shirt I made, and here I have it. Uh, that's actually using some uh, commercially made dyes, so you can tell the colors are very, very vibrant there. I made that shirt last summer, um, an example of pretty cool design, and I love the colors. Also, we've been uh, celebrating Asian Pacific American Heritage Month, and with that note, we have some Tongan words of the day, thanks to my coworker Ninetti. Uh, I mentioned she'll be joining us next Tuesday. We're going to be making some watermelon otai. It's a type of drink that people in Tonga drink and here in the United States as well. Uh, so Ninetti, let's see what words she has for us this week. Good afternoon, family and friends. My name is Ninetti and welcome back to the Tongan word of the day. Or in other words, Today, I hear you guys get to tie-dye with Kelly. How exciting. I translated some of the words and some colors into the Tongan language. I've listed them below so you guys read along as I read them out loud. Our first word is t-shirt, or in the Tongan language, it's falani. Our first color word is red or hula hula. Our third word, which is the color of my t-shirt, is blue or lanu pulu. Our fourth word is green or lanu mata. Our fifth word is orange or lanu mori. And our last word is purple, lan baleti. I can't wait to see what you guys create today. I hope you enjoy. Thank you. I'll see you guys next week. Malo apito ofatu. Thank you, Nettie, and thank you for sharing and teaching us. I can't wait to try out some of these words. Let's practice them real quick all together. So the word for shirt, she said falani. The word for red, kula kula. The word for blue, lanu bulu. Green, lanu mata. Orange, lanu moli. And purple, lanu buleti. I am learning. I hope you're trying too. It's lots of fun. Thanks, Nettie. Yeah, we'll see you oh, next week. <laughs> All right. So continuing with our Asian Pacific Islander Heritage Month celebration, I thought that it would be a great tie-in, no pun intended, or maybe, <laughs> to our program today to share um, I mean, throughout the world, or all cultures pretty much, there's all different types of dyeing and ways of resist dyeing, uh, which is 
kind of tying things so that the dye does not go into certain places in the fabric and stays the original color, which on our slide here, you can see on the left hand side, there's a bunch of different examples there of different types of Japanese shibori tie dye techniques. Uh, not exactly tie dye, but it is uh, shibori, which is a form of resist dye. On the right hand side, there's a photo of a woman making shibori. Uh, it's actually an illustration from 1845. So shibori is a, a tradition technique that goes way back uh, in the Japanese culture. And in that illustration, she's actually, if you look closely by her hands, she is using needle and thread. She's tying up little pieces of the fabric to create really interesting effects. Um, so if you're interested in that, definitely research. I'm going to share a few uh, examples here because you might want to try some of these techniques out on your t-shirt or on a piece of fabric. So the first one, uh, first shibori technique is called itajime. And you can see in the photos on the upper left hand corner, uh, this is a technique where you fold. Um, so lots of folds, they're for folding kind of the uh, all over the place, right? Uh, folding and folding and folding until in that second photo on the right top there, you see they've actually folded all that fabric together and they've sandwiched it between uh, wood blocks. And so in that final picture below, you can see the result that that has. So it really, the dye does not get into, I think that's kind of sandwiched in between that wood block and it really just gets on the outside. Um, I have not tried out this technique precisely with wooden blocks. I think it sounds really cool though. Um, there's a website, seamwork.com. Um, they have a lot of great tutorials um, on shibori dyeing techniques and there's definitely um, a lot of uh, other great resources out there as well. Here is another example of Japanese shibori. This is the kanoko style. And this one, um, if you've done tired at it before, this is a pretty uh, typical way to kind of get those uh, design effects, right? So you're simply uh, rolling, twisting your fabric and then uh, tying it or uh, using rubber bands, right? To uh, section off pieces where essentially the dye will not go. And you can see on the left-hand side, some examples where they've twisted the fabric and rolled it up and then applied some rubber bands in a couple different ways there. The right-hand side, you can see how those results look. So um, I think this one's pretty familiar. And I mean, there's so many different ways that you can uh, try this out. The final technique that I'll share, um, and again, all of these, can be applied to tie dye, tie dyeing a shirt or just a piece of fabric. Um, this last Japanese shibori technique is the nui uh, style. And as you can see in the left hand photo there, they've sort of scrunched up the fabric and they're actually using needle and thread to uh, hold those scrunches in place. Um, you can also do this uh, by scrunching the fabric together and then tying that big scrunched ball of fabric together. Um, so there's a lot of different uh, techniques you can try there and pretty cool results, uh, as you can see from the photo on the right hand side there. And since we have been sort of uh, tapping into the Tongan culture and traditions, I wanted to just share this resource so you can check it out on your own time. Um, I've been actually doing quite a bit of research into the Tongan tapa cloth or ngatu, um, and I found a really great Google Arts and Culture resource that I believe is the Kingdom of Tonga put together. Um, so if you look on Google Arts and Culture, there's this really amazing, you can click through the pictures, there's some uh, video and sound, and you can learn about how they make this uh, cloth out of the bark of a tree near bark of a tree. And then they also apply designs and some really uh, interesting, uh, the, the techniques they use. And another great note is that it's very collaborative. The women in Tonga and elsewhere work together to create these beautiful and amazing pieces of art and handcrafts. So check it out. All right, so um, last bit about here. Uh, <laughs> about things you can research. Um, since I'm not, I don't have time to go over all the different ways that you can create different tie-dye effects. Um, so I've recommended um, some tutorials or words that you can search for and when you do some searching on the internet. On YouTube, I've watched a lot of Mr. Tie-Dye's videos um, and he goes really, he shows really in great detail how to, the exact steps of how to tie things up, fold them, scrunch them, so you can get certain design effects. So check out his videos if you're, you're really into to that. Um, and then furthermore, you can try searching tie-dye techniques or tie-dye designs. And there's a lot of other great resources out there. I find the videos to be pretty helpful. Um, 
on the photos here, we have the left hand side, that's a shirt that uh, you'll see a photo of here in a moment. You can see it's kind of all, again, it doesn't even look like a shirt <laughs> um, as it's all rolled up and tied together. Uh, and then on the right hand side, that's a photo I took while I was tying up um, a shirt we saw at the beginning of the presentation. See it again, just a few moments. Uh, this is definitely a topic I love a lot. I've had a lot of fun experimenting with homemade dyes. Um, did you know that you can make dyes out of red cabbage? Which actually looks purple to me, but we call it red cabbage, okay. Uh, you can also make dyes out of turmeric, which is a, it's a type of spice. It's a root that people use in cooking. Uh, have some of that dye here today. You can make dyes out of coffee, black beans, and I have an example of that. You can make dyes with beets, avocado skins, blueberries, and Kool-Aid, which is a little less natural, but uh, certainly pretty accessible. Um, and there's lots of other materials that you can make dyes out of. Um, I've tried most of these. Uh, haven't tried the avocado skins, but I hear that produces a pink, pinkish dye. So um, a lot of times it's very surprising, uh, the, the actual result of the dyes. Um, and I have a lot of fun just like with this process by itself. Um, I like making the dyes and seeing how they, how they turn out. So here is an example of a shirt you can see in the photo. Um, this is a shirt that I dyed. I actually did it in two steps. I first dyed uh, the shirt in eucalyptus leaf dye, um, which you can see down below that photo. On the photo, there's a, <laughs> a branch of the eucalyptus leaf. Uh, eucalyptus is a really excellent uh, source of dye. It is very fragrant though, so if you do want to try out making a eucalyptus dye, if you can try it outside or make sure that nobody in your house is sensitive to that smell. I think it smells really good, but I know it can bother other people. Uh, and eucalyptus produces sort of, in this case, it's a very light, uh, sort of light brown, reddish brown. Um, but I have done on different types of fabric where it's like almost red. It's really beautiful. And I find branches of eucalyptus when I'm out riding my bike or walking and they've already fallen off the trees. So it's a great way to get some material too. I also uh, use black beans. So I soaked the beans for at least 24 hours in water. And then I removed the, the liquid from the beans, cooked the beans side note. Um, and then I soaked my shirt in the dye for at least 24 hours. And actually, if we can go back, that photo on the left down here, that is, um, that's the black bean dye, the one that looks purple there. And then the eucalyptus um, looks looking a little more brown there. As you can see, when it dries, it looks a lot lighter. Um, so the black bean dye, I didn't cook at all. Um, the eucalyptus dye, ah, <laughs> I, I did end up cooking that one. And actually the shirt itself was immersed in the dye while I was heating it. So um, some of the dyes do require cooking. So if you need to get help with that. And then just a few tips here um, about working with homemade dyes. Um, so as far as the fabric you wanna use, you um, can get 100% cotton, uh, white t-shirts pretty easily. Fortunately, um, so if you can find a t-shirt that's cotton, that's a great fiber uh, material to work with. We also have linen, silk, and wool. Those are other natural fibers that work well. Um, you can also try using a fixative or a mordant. That will help the dye to almost, the, the words I'm using are stick to the, the textile, to the fabric itself. So I've actually done that today and I'll show you in just a few minutes. Um, and you can research that a little more if you, if you want to try that out. Um, one way of doing that is simmering the shirt in uh, four parts water to one part vinegar. Uh, that's simmering over heat. Um, you can also try soaking your shirt in uh, soy milk uh, for about a day and then apply the dye with your soy milk shirt. <laughs> That'll help your dyes uh, stick to the fabric more and oftentimes come out more vibrantly as well. Another tip here is take your time. Some dyes take time to make and will have better results the more time you allow to the fit fabric to soak, like I mentioned with my black bean dye. Uh, and then if you are using these natural dyes, you want to make sure you wash these shirts in, or whatever your fabric, your shirt, in uh, cold water, if you can hand wash it even better, and then let it air dry in a shady spot. Some dyes will, if they're exposed to sun, they <laughs> will fade very quickly. Um, so just a, a, a note for you to, to know that, um, especially with the natural dyes, they're, they're not going to come out 
as vibrant as this uh, shirt that I made with commercial dyes. Um, but again, I still think there's a lot of value in learning about them, making them, and take notes about what you do. That way you can uh, repeat your experiment if it's really successful and experiment, have fun with it. All right. So as I'm about to show you, this was my cabbage, red cabbage that I chopped up and then uh, cooked. And as you can see in the bottom photo here, uh, that's after I cooked the cabbage and just notice the difference in the color there. Uh, so certainly heating the, the, the cabbage extracts the color from the cabbage and puts it in the water, which is what I did. I had my tie dyed shirt all tied up and you can see there, I, I decided to have two containers. I made a lot of dye. Um, so let's take a look at the results. And I'm also gonna show you how to make some Kool-Aid dye. And if we have time, I'll, I'll see what else we can do in these last um, couple minutes we have here. I'm gonna go ahead and change my camera. So you can see my crazy workspace. So here's that shirt. Uh, you can see it's actually a nice, like light purple color. Um, this was the black bean dye that I used for that. Let me get that out of the way though, because again, that vibrant. Um, I do have some commercial dyes here, um, and you can get these pretty inexpensively. They sell little packets of them also. Um, this came in a kit. It was maybe fifteen dollars or so, and it had it has more colors, not just two. Um, but if you really want those vibrant colors, I do recommend you look for a commercial dye. I'm sure you can find those at Target um, and other stores. But let's take a look at that shirt. Woohoo! So I did go ahead and rinse this out. Um, and you'll notice the color is pretty light. I don't think it shows up as well as maybe in person. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and Let's see, I decided I was going to do half of it because I'm also doing this program in Spanish uh, in Espanol in una semana. So if you speak Spanish, definitely check out that video. Um, also, so you can use rubber bands, of course, to uh, tie up your fabric or shirt. Um, I like to use, it gives you, a, it's a little easier to work with than applying lots and lots of rubber bands, I find. Um, this is an artificial sinew, which is um, essentially, it's sort of like a waxed uh, yarn cord of, of sorts. <laughs> um, and this is what I use to make all of these ties. Um, and you actually don't have to like knot it each time. Uh, there's different ways to just keep wrapping it. If you watch Mr. Tie-Dye, I think it's really mesmerizing to, uh, to watch the way he uses his hands to control the fabric, make it do what he wants to do. And let's see. <laughs> See how fast I can release this. I guess that's one thing. If you put lots of ties, I'm gonna go in there and cut. <laughs> and this again is the red cabbage dye. And I will note as well, um, this shirt in particular, I actually simmered this shirt over heat in water and vinegar. And that actually, it did two things. It allowed, um, especially working with cotton, it, it allows the dye to stick to the fabric a little better. It also changes the color uh, of the shirt. All right, so. Now, I definitely, I will say, I tied this bit a lot tighter. The bottom portion was a little looser, um, so it kind of has a little bit of a kind of marbled look. Although again, it's, it's probably a little difficult to tell. I think it does translate a little bit though to the, to the camera. It looks almost white, uh, but for comparison, I do have a white shirt here. So it's definitely not white. It's actually a really pretty uh, light pinkish uh, color. I wish we could see a little more contrast there, but you know, it is what it is. Let me show you. So I mentioned this one has uh, vinegar, rather. And now this is the same dye. This is a purple cabbage, red cabbage dye. And you can maybe tell it's a different color, actually. This one, I did not use vinegar. And then again, got a lot of stuff here. <laughs> this is my white shirt for contrast. So you know, there's definitely, a, um, with my red cabbage dye, there's, uh, these are again, cotton shirts. So uh, that's one thing I forgot to mention is the 
depending on the type of uh, fiber you're using, whether it's cotton, silk, uh, or wool or anything else, that will also uh, is another variable in, in the, the dye result. Um, but I really wanted to show the effect of having vinegar and not having vinegar and how they both turned out uh, actually pretty cool. Now this, uh, this shirt did have, you can probably see there's a little bit of blue. Uh, it was already dyed a little bit, so it was white with this blue dye. Um, so that's what you're seeing there, but this kind of purplish, purplish bluish color. This cotton and cabbage dye. All right, so I might actually uh, do something with this in just a moment. Also got a fresh white tea here. Let's see if we'll have some time to get into that. But I did want to mention how to make the Kool-Aid dye. So this is one I've already prepared. Um, and you can uh, look online as well for different types of recipes. This recipe I found is using um, about an ounce of water per packet of Kool-Aid. Um, so it's not a ton of dye, but I have, I think I ordered like 12 or 18 packs of, of Kool-Aid for this. Um, so I, I guess if you made a lot of different colors or you had a color that you really liked, you could make more of it. Um, but just keep that in mind. There are different recipes. This one is doesn't produce a ton of dye and it's orange. So it's blending in the table with the table. So, but you can see here, um, I've applied it to, um, this is actually a silk fabric and the silk really, uh, really likes to, uh, it likes to be dyed for sure. It, it'll definitely be a little more vibrant than if I were to do it with cotton. Let me, I was curious, I'm gonna make, make some Kool-Aid dye here. Now this one is, uh, Mixed berry flavor, what color do you think it's gonna be? Black's blue, but berries are different colors. Let's find out. <laughs> now, I'm, I'm, I guess you could probably do this with uh, pretty much any other kind of powdered juice mix. Uh, the thing about Kool-Aid is it does not have sugar added to it. I was reading and I was like, what? Um, so I'm not sure like other types of juice dyes, if there's sugar in there, if that might have a chemical reaction, hard to say. Anyways, uh, let's go ahead and it's looking like it's gonna be blue though. It probably looks white to you. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna pour in, I'm just guesstimating. It said an ounce. That's probably a little more than an ounce. And I'm gonna, smells really delicious. I mixed this orange one earlier and my, my workspace was smelling very orange, artificially orange. <laughs> and my hypothesis was correct. The package was blue. The dye is blue also. Okay. Well, let's go ahead. And this, uh, this was just a little piece of fabric. Actually, let me, let me grab another one. So again, this is the, the silk. Since we're here. I'm actually gonna, I wanna try out, I, you know, I haven't been using my uh, Tongan words. <laughs> Blue, Lanubulu, I like that one, Lanubulu. And then we have orange, Lanumoli, Lanumoli. All right. So I wanted to also practice, that reminded me, I wanted to practice maybe one of those uh, shibori techniques. And I don't remember the name at the moment, but I really liked that first one where they were folding it. So that's what I'm doing here with my little piece of fabric. And, and you can do this with little pieces of fabric. You could probably even do it. I know when I was younger, I would like use uh, like coffee filters or even just like paper towels, quite honestly, paper also uh, will take dye. Um, so it's, you know, there's, you don't have to have a t-shirt. You don't have to necessarily even have fabric to have fun with dyes. Um, there's lots of tutorials I've seen as well of like making your own paints uh, that you can paint with. So lots of possibilities. And the good thing, like right with the beans, you actually can eat the beans still. Um, so now I'm going to use some of that artificial sinew. I don't have any wood with me, so I'm just going to wrap it all up. And I was able to reuse this string here too, which is, I was wondering if I could. That seemed to work all right. I'll go ahead. 
plop it in my my die. Ooh, now I'm being very careful. I'm not actually putting my hands in the die, but I was reading that um, it will definitely turn your hands colors. And if you don't want that, uh, you can definitely use some gloves. Uh, okay, so yeah, that's uh, the Kool-Aid die. And again, you can, one thing I was going to suggest as well is if you have like a tray, something like, this, um, you could actually, you know, have your shirt on here and then you could either pour on the dyes or there's a lot of different ways you can, can apply them, um, especially since it's such a small quantity of dye. Um, I think I mentioned that it was vinegar <laughs> that I was putting in here. Um, again, if you want to look up a recipe uh, before you try it out, that's always, a, I find it helpful to have a, a recipe, um, which is how I prepared for this program. All right, so we've got about four more minutes. Oh, let me show you real quick. So here's a, this is a, again, a silk noil fabric. So as I mentioned, silk really loves to absorb the dyes. And this dye is uh, on the outer edge. You can see it's yellow. Oh, we didn't have the yellow word for it in Tongan. That's okay. Uh, but in the middle, it's brown. So the middle was made with coffee and the outer was used with turmeric, which I do have here. But let's get a shirt ready. Since I have just a couple more minutes, I'll show you some additional ways that you can play around with different tiny dyeing techniques. I think this is, I'm going to put this one in the yellow dye. Um, so this, this uh, shirt has been soaked in, uh, actually simmered. I put it in a pot and put four cups of water and a cup of vinegar. And I essentially like cooked it. I simmered it over the heat for maybe half an hour or so. And that's, you know, allowing the dye to, or the vinegar to soak into the fiber and that will help the dye to absorb into the fiber. Now, I'm not sure what I want to do yet. And if you follow Mr. Tie Dye, He's got so many great ideas. I think for now, I'm gonna do some folding and I'm just gonna fold up like this. And then let's see, maybe, and I will say, I just like to experiment. I'm not really thinking entirely about what it's gonna look like. I'm just like having fun. I will say, I think for me, I like the folding techniques. They might be a little harder for younger, little, little hands, but maybe not at the same time. It doesn't have to be perfect. In fact, I'm just gonna fold all the way in sewing or in even Mr. Mr. Tida, I believe he, he calls these pleats or folds. This is kind of the opposite of what I did with the other one. Okay, and then I think I will kind of fold it like that. <laughs> hmm, what should I do with the sleeves? Hmm. I think I'll just leave them out for now. And just to show you how the rubber bands would work, I think I'm happy with these folds. I'm gonna put a rubber band there. And as you can see, it's a little tricky to get all the way down there and then get it really tight. So if I were to use the sinew, I've got some here. simply wrap it all around like that. All right, and in our final moments together here, I've got my delicious turmeric dye. This is probably one of the easiest to make. You don't have to cut anything. You just put the turmeric powder in there and cook it with some vinegar and water. And I'm stirring it all up now. And then, let's see, 
Yeah. I was touching some of it. Like it's in my fingernails now. I have yellow fingernails. So this is a very potent dye. It wants to color everything yellow. It also smells good too. All right. Well, we have Kool-Aid dyes. We've got dyes made of black beans. We've got all kinds of different dyes, different ways to tie our fabric, our t-shirts, our falani, our Tongan word. Let me just get over here so I can say farewell. Thank you all for joining us. Um, I do hope to put together a list of resources on this topic so that you can uh, check out some of those, but certainly uh, use your information seeking skills to surf the net, look for some uh, uh, recipes and other things uh, to support you in your making. I hope you all have a great rest of your day and I'll see you next time on Create with Kelly. See you later. Hello, thank you for that, Kelly. That was really cool. Oh, I have to try some of those dyes. <laughs> yeah, you never really think of it as being something that you can just kind of like do at home, but that's how dyes get made. That's true. <laughs> All right, but in the meantime, hello everyone. If you just came off of Kelly's program, please feel free to stick around for uh, Debbie and I. We're back for another round of afternoon doodling. My name is Lynn. I work for the San Mateo County Library System. You may recognize my face from the other art streams that we've been doing or maybe from the Belmont branch and I kind of just introduced you but do you want to go ahead anyway? Yeah, no problem. Hi, I'm Debbie. Uh, I also work for San Mateo County Libraries and usually you would find me at the Milbrae branch. All, All right. right, so we have a bit of a Oh, go ahead. A bit of a laid back day today compared to the past couple of weeks. So for the past two weeks, I have been very self-indulgent. I made Debbie give me expression prompts to draw with a couple of my own original characters. This week, my wrist needs a little bit of a break from doing mad dashes of drawing. So I thought it might be interesting to go over the drawings we ended up with in a little more depth to kind of talk about what I was thinking while trying to recreate the expressions that I was prompted. And I also have a little bit of a shorthand cheat sheet for some of the shorthands that we've talked about occasionally in terms of like signifying emotion, especially if you're looking to be a little more anime. So let me go ahead and share my screen momentarily. You've been drawing a lot lately? A lot. <laughs> oh, okay. A little I've too been working much. on um, my own side project where I'm trying to get a comic done by the end of June. Oh, nice. And I'm officially technically in the last stretch, but it's something I've been doing since the beginning of March. And oh my goodness, my hand is feeling it. Oh no. Yeah, you got to rest it. I mean, that's yeah. a... I'm very proud of what I've managed to do. I may, something I might want to test out actually is, uh, I use digital art. This is a good segue into it. And I specifically use Procreate, which gives me the ability to actually record my drawings. And because I am a heathen, I draw several different comic pages all in the same document. So they're all in different layers. Oh, wow. So it's a nightmare to show people, but it makes for a really cool video. Because oh, you see multiple pages being made. Oh, that is cool. <laughs> so I'm curious if that would actually run in Zoom. I'm not sure if anyone would be interested in that, but that might be another like put a pin in it. I need a break day. <laughs> yes, for sure. But um, in the meantime, I thought I'd start off with a little bit of a go over of some of the kind of like especially anime emotion shorthands that we've kind of talked about and sort of clarify what they tend to be used for. So any extras that you think of, Debbie, feel free to shout them out. Because okay. I just did the first things that kind of came to mind for me. Yeah, I'll try to think of some too. So in terms of little details that you might be adding onto a face that you've drawn in order to like try and emphasize what it is they're feeling, these are kind of the first general symbols that I think of. So if you want to show someone is feeling mad and angry, 
what you'll often see are these weird little guys, either four of them or three of them. And what they usually are meant to signify is like a pulsing vein, which is meant to show that this person's like really, really incensed. Like <laughs> they're so mad that it's almost bulging out of their skin. Cool. So whenever you, where they get put, tends to have a lot of liberties taken, especially if you're going really, really cartoony. You'll sometimes even have them just like floating around the character's head. But if you want to make a little mark that shows this person is mad, angry veins. <laughs> yeah, usually right on that forehead, right? Mm -hmm. That's where it's supposed to be, but yeah. whether it's actually put there is wildly varied, but that's what its origin is. All right. And then another common one that is often shown are sweat drops. So if someone's feeling a bit nervous about something, I included two versions because this is actually what I tend to use, which is a little subtler. So you have the face, yeah, and then like right on the cheek, there's a tiny little sweat drop. Whereas what you'll often see is you'll have the face and you have like a big old sweat drop right on the top of the head but they're kind of meant to show the same thing. There's something about the situation where they're, they're, they're not quite sure of themselves. Nervous is the word. <laughs> yeah, I feel like that big, the big sweat drop, that's definitely very much a Japanese manga anime uh, mm -hmm. tip. <laughs> yeah, very, very much Yeah, like that one especially. Mm -hmm. But you'll see characters sweating when they're nervous, even in like other cartoons. They just tend to lean a little more towards like quote unquote realistic but specifically exaggerated like you see it running down them mm -hmm. whereas what you'll often see in japan is just like sweat drop appears lower slightly for animation right <laughs> and then next up is one thing that i like to add to a ton of my drawings which are sparkles <laughs> <laughs> so they usually are intended to like jazz things up sometimes if a character is acting smug and they said something cool, you'll see a little sparkle appear to be like, ha ha, oh. I'm on it. <laughs> Shing. I always hear yeah. like sound effects with that go with those sparkles. <laughs> but usually they mean that someone's acting a little showy or occasionally, depending on the context, it might tie in with the next little thing I drew, which is meant to be like, it's very like dreamy. It's very like fantasy kind of thing like you're looking at someone and you're going to like daydream mode of just like oh gosh them and they're just like sparkles everywhere mm -hmm. and there's several different ways of drawing them I included three my go-to's tend to be these ones you saw Debbie do this version so <laughs> that's my that's my version <laughs> <laughs> there's a pretty wide variety and they're very fun to use where oftentimes I just throw them into the background of a drawing to be like and then sparkles <laughs> <laughs> yeah i'll usually do it just for anything like shiny too like i'll, I'll use it way more literally um something mm -hmm. as shiny or glitter glittery yeah yeah like obviously you can use it for real life things but emotions tend to indicate that someone either is or thinks they're on top of their game mm -hmm. whether it's themselves or like a person they're looking at <laughs> yes and then next up I feel like this is the most difficult to tell what I'm talking about drawing. I may briefly go into a blank canvas and demonstrate this with a cheat sheet brush that Procreate actually has, but you will see this, like I mentioned, kind of combined with sparkles a lot, especially in like shoujo stories, which are stories traditionally aimed at girls, usually about like romantic things. So if you're looking at someone and you start seeing like these varying sizes of very softly colored bubbles, it usually means that we've gone into like a very lovey-dovey dream-like vision. Like it's very much, you're looking at whatever it is with rose colored glasses. I usually see that as like a background. Are you, is that how it usually is used or do you yes. see it like, uh, okay. Yeah, so it's usually, usually a background, background, but it's usually meant to emphasize whatever emotion either a character is expressing like they're just acting so lovely and like shoujo bubbles appear behind them or they're the love interest and the other characters looking at them and you know they're the love interest because there's just soft colored 
bubbles and flowers and sparkles everywhere. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Who uses them all? <laughs> yeah. Where on the flip side, the other time you might see bubbles is when it's meant to be like someone's, they're not all together there. Usually they're tired, whether it's because of lack of sleep or something else. But if it's like very small little bubbles that are acting kind of similar to how like if you were making little Z sounds, it tends to be more like they're sleepy. If it's big bubbles everywhere, it's more setting the mood of how we're supposed to be reading this character's expression. So, and then yeah, Z's for snoring. <laughs> and I was thinking like, I wasn't sure if you were gonna mention when I first started reading manga, um, when, when one of the things I was confused about was uh, a traditional way of communicating somebody is sleeping is that big oh the snot bubble yeah. yes <laughs> it's like a big <laughs> snot bubble coming out of their nose and I'm like what does that mean like I always thought that was very strange yeah mm -hmm. it's uh, but it just means somebody's sleeping is that right like really deep in sleep I assume yeah it's kind of their equivalent of their snoring yeah like without the actual visual sound effect I'm absolutely positive there's a very specific cultural reason for why it's the shorthand but I don't know what it is and that's kind of why I never use it personally yeah but yeah that's one thing where it can take a little while to figure it out <laughs> yeah and again I think it's it's very Japanese I would say yeah like one of the most hilarious examples I've seen is um I feel like you know the Ace Attorney games right Oh, yeah, I do. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know the spinoff with Miles Edgeworth? No, I have not. Okay. There's spinoff <laughs> games that star Miles Edgeworth. Um, in the original series, he's the main rival of the main character, um, where now he's the one solving cases. And there's one, to spoil it slightly, <laughs> where it turns out one of the suspects is faking constantly being asleep by literally blowing bubbles underneath her hair to like oh. fake snot bubbles. Okay, that's interesting. <laughs> and it's one of those things where like you wouldn't get the reveal of the joke without having the context of what the different layers of it mean. Right, that's funny. <laughs> <laughs> Only works like in comics or, or I yeah, guess Yeah, like yeah. there's this whole turn where it turns out like, oh, she was faking being sleepy the whole time and it's because mm -hmm. she's blowing literal bubbles and you're like, what? Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <You're probably already laughs> <Japanese>. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so those are kind of the, those are my personally most used um, little like emotion shorthands. If like whatever expression I'm drawing, I just want to make it a little more cartoony mm -hmm. or something along those lines. So those are the ones I tend to like to use. Yeah. And then this next row are some exaggerated versions of eyes that are often used for like very deliberately simplified expressions that indicate kind of a specific feeling for your scene. So in case it's not clear, this line is the nose in all of them. <laughs> but yeah, so the first one is when like the top of the line is this very, very flat line and how regardless of however you normally draw the pupils, they get reduced to like just very simple little like half circles. That usually indicates that whoever you're talking to is just not impressed with you. Kind of like squinting a little bit like. Yeah, like you kind of got like the lid of the eyes, your face mm -hmm. is gone like deliberately sort of like blank, just mm -hmm. a flat expression that conveys <laughs> right. volumes. Mm -hmm. And then this one, which I think often pops up in anime, is when the eye is reduced just to like a little dot circle. Sometimes it's colored in, sometimes it's left white, but it usually indicates that someone's been surprised. But it's not like a really big, heartbreaking, jarring surprise. It's just kind of like a, oh, like you kind of feel your brain just come to a halt. <laughs> mm -hmm. So it's usually meant to be fairly lighthearted in its execution, but it's usually in meant to be their surprise. Something has just kind of like stopped them in their tracks. They've gone blank and they're just like, huh. 
that yeah that's that's actually a very subtle surprise because like for me when I draw someone who's like oh <gasps> surprised mm-hmm. I usually draw line like lines outside on the side of the eyes mm. um I don't know if we, that makes sense like that yeah like oh yeah there's lines on the outside and that makes them like you know big eyes but the the one with just the hollow small circles that mm-hmm. just me that's like like you're frozen like what you know, like it's, mm-hmm. it's it's definitely a subtle it's a subtle type of surprise yeah like surprise you usually associate with being like a big emotion mm-hmm. but one thing i've noticed is that whenever it's meant to just be a small little like oh <laughs> they yeah. do the little like blank dot eyes <laughs> yeah that's good and then you got your classic pseudo dragon ball angry eyes so the top of the eyes narrow downwards even in like sometimes you'll add extra eyebrows like they're already pointing downwards the way the eyebrows would and the eyebrows are then are like even further angry Mm v-shape but yeah the tops of the eyes are almost acting like how when you're like mad it makes sort of a scrunch in the center so your eyes become kind of triangular so that usually indicates someone's on the angry side (laughs) right and then add the little vein to make them furious (laughs) Mm -hmm. but this particular eye shape can be quite fun because you can even use it as like a characteristic like a characterization of someone where if you have a character that's just always angry regardless of what the rest of their face is doing you give them angry eyes and you still have a wide range of like expressions you can make with them but they'll always have this undercurrent of feeling tense somehow. I always like to um, put, if you put a smile underneath, now he looks evil. <laughs> <laughs> that's also a good one. Yeah, so yeah. that's kind of a good case where like if you're designing a character, you give them like the angry eye shape as a default. Right. And then this is kind of a variation on the flat expression where this time there's just flat lines on both the top and the bottom of the eyes. You don't normally indicate the bottom with that previous flat expression. And wherever you put the pupil in, usually very small or very under detailed, it's just kind of like the sense of baffled disbelief. <laughs> like you're just looking at this thing and you're like, really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's a different really than the flat really, but it's still kind of in that same genre of just I can't believe what I'm looking at. <laughs> There's a little bit of that surprise mm-hmm. in it too. Um, yeah. It's like you're surprised that you're in such disbelief, whereas the flat almost feels like it's reaffirming something you already knew. Right. It's like, I shouldn't have been disappointed, and yet, <laughs> versus <laughs> I'm disappointed. <laughs> right. Yes, for sure. And then you got a few different variations of the closed eyes. So usually if your eye shape is closed and curved upwards. It's part of someone being very happy. It's usually part of a smile. Like when people really, really smile, you'll often see like their eyes kind of like scrunch up and it's very cute. And so I tend to think that when they draw the eyes completely closed, it's meant to just like imitate that shape. So yeah, happy. On the flip side, if you reverse it and have them aim downward, usually that means that they're like asleep versus like, you'll never see someone with their eyes closed like that if they're not active. But sometimes this version can also be used if someone's like pondering something or like they're thinking usually in kind of a comedic tone where it's like, ah, yes, yes, I see, I see. Like sometimes if the eyes are closed, they're usually curved downward for those. I would also say if you put a smile underneath that, they're very content. Ah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then this is a variation of kind of the content where usually you'll have it paired with like eyebrows and a smile, but for whatever reason, when it's just like a thick line of eyelashes, just kind of flat and closed, it's very, it's usually like this person is just relaxed. Mm. I always thought that was something different for some reason. It could be. I tend, I feel like I tend to see it in contexts where you're usually reacting to someone else getting up to shenanigans and it's almost like relaxing. Mm. <laughs> They're like mm. just this embodiment of energy over there and just like, 
Yeah, you do you. (laughs) I thought it was sometimes like, uh, like I'm, it could be like, I'm dead tired. Uh, you know, like that's what Mm -hmm. I thought, but that's interesting. I haven't seen it. Yeah. Like that. Uh huh. Like, Oh, yeah. it could also be like that. I think part of why I think of it the other way is it doesn't really come across in the way I drew it, but Mm -hmm. Oftentimes, if you leave a lot of white space, even when, like, eyes are closed, you'll still retain a sense of, like, how anime tends to draw its eyes with lots of sparkles and things, which usually indicate, like, someone's, like, energetic, full of life. And so when you leave white gaps in the closed eyes, it kind of still carries that visual cue over. Mm -hmm. And so when the eyes are drawn in, like, this very flat way, but you still see a lot of white space, you kind of get that carryover sense that there are sparkles here i see so that's how i read it but Mm. yeah just that example right there shows that there's still a wide variety of how you can use these things yeah they're just just kind of templates to get you started right just changing the the mouth can like change the meaning of you Mm -hmm. know some of these eyes uh yeah same thing with the eyebrows you see it with Mm -hmm. the angry eyebrows you want them really angry you add the v if you want it to be a little more neutral, but just have like that undercurrent of this character's angry, you just mm-hmm. do neutral eyebrows. Mm-hmm. Suddenly they're not actively angry. It just feels like it's part of a personality trait. Right. That's awesome. All right. Well, that filled the time better than I thought. So <laughs> there's some more I was thinking. Like you, you asked me if I could think of some more. Yeah, we could either I- do more or my original second part was to oh. kind of talk about some of the choices I made with these. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. So, yeah, because hmm, I'm trying to think where to start. Maybe just some of the details that I tend to like to use in order to like easily indicate different feelings or emotions. Like, I love doing eye bags. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like they tend not to have a very solid direction, but I find that they add a lot of character. And even if like your eye shape stays relatively the same, regardless of how you're drawing it, when you add little like extra lines underneath or even a lack of them, it gives a different feeling to what the drawing is. And I think it kind of goes hand in hand with that like sketchiness theory as well. When things are a little messy, they feel they can feel a little more lifelike almost. It almost feels like you captured something in motion because it's not a perfectly straight, smooth line. Right. So yeah, so- I absolutely adore doing <laughs> eye bags. Usually either um, at the bottom or sometimes like right on mm-hmm. the side where the kind of corner is mm-hmm. and sometimes I could say like you could use eye bags for uh in context you can use eye bags to make somebody look more aged too mm-hmm. so like someone who's older you would maybe add some eye bags or crow's feet or something um, yeah yeah you can actually use them as actual wrinkles as well <laughs> yes <laughs> I tend to use them as like indicators of emotion like the right. more eye bag someone has the more you know that they're just done (laughs) right right that's interesting like to think of these lines as like literal or totally like Mm -hmm. you know it's a it's a language you know Mm -hmm. yeah it can be a lot of fun to play with like even looking at this landscape you can kind of (laughs) see i like doing them and i use them in wildly varying amounts even when it's the same character like these could be all in the same scene and I would use different eye bags just depending on like what emotion I'm trying to sell at the moment. Mm -hmm. And then the other biggest thing is probably just so much of expressions are just in the eyebrows. Like you can completely change how something feels depending on whether it's like, oh, I'm sad and hopeless, upturned, please, please help me versus the angry downward I am not selling this at all just please give me the thing I don't think you mentioned the like uneven eyebrows where Mm -hmm. one is like maybe straight and the other one is up and that's more like um suspicious I guess you can say Mm mm-hmm yeah you say that huh yeah (laughs) yeah 
Yeah. That's always another, I like to do that. That's always, I do that a lot too. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. It, they're really fun because they give like kind of visual tones for whatever the character is saying as well. So you can have the same little blurb of dialogue, but depending on the face that your character's making next to what they're saying, it can change how the reader reads it. Mm -hmm. So like, let's just say someone's saying, really? But it's coming from a face like this versus a face like this. Mm versus a face like this really? <laughs> versus a face like this really? like the little crying <laughs> laughing like yeah. it's the exact same thing and there's plenty of ways you can play with speech bubbles as well which are super fun but even without having to change that the way you read the character changes the way you read the dialogue mm-hmm. and let's see what I definitely encourage, yeah, to, you know, viewers, if you're like, you know, working on your characters, definitely play with all those expressions, because that's how you can get like the subtleties that you might need to convey, you know, how your character is um, feeling. So yeah, Mm -hmm. definitely explore that. But yeah, a lot of it comes down to the eyebrows. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) It's all, I mean, it's all a package deal, I'd say, you know, like, you didn't talk about your mouth yet. You know, I don't know if you want to do that in the future, but like. I can try. Yeah. I mean, I feel like the mouth can, there's a lot of ways you can uh, express a mouth and, you know, to give more expression to, you know. Yeah. Yeah. The mouth is really, really a large part of it as well. My biggest Mm -hmm. thing is I'm not very good at shifting the jawline in Mm -hmm. my drawings, Mm -hmm. which kind of changes the degree to which I use it in the way that other art styles might. So like, for instance, you can already kind of see it, let's say with these two drawings of Jenna, the chin is pretty much the same. So like, there are absolutely ways where I could have taken this drawing and exaggerated it even further by like having the space stay the same and therefore like elongate the face. So it really feels like every part of the muscle is going into this yell, but that's just not how I really taught myself how to draw it. Mm, I see. So instead, I tend to give myself a same amount of space and fit the mouth in there, depending on what it is I want them to do. Mm -hmm. And I don't really draw lips. I rather leave them up to imagination interpretation. Because I already use such thin lines, they end up feeling weirdly defined, like more than I want them to be. Mm -hmm. But on the flip side, I like to make my mouths very wobbly. Mm. Yeah. Oh, see? I think you should do another lesson on mouths. (laughs) There's a lot. (laughs) Yeah, I can put a pen in it because like one of my favorite mouth shapes is just kind of like that. Mm -hmm. But even like squiggly, like, you know, Mm -hmm. (laughs) one squiggly, Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> or like I'll leave gaps sometimes as well. Like it's a smile, but it's not totally connected. And it kind of it gives a different feeling than when you actually show the whole thing. Like there's merits to leaving certain parts up to the viewer's imagination. But yeah, I can I can try and see if I can come up with a lesson. I think <laughs> on that I'm I think there's not a good amount. sure how much I'd have to talk about. <laughs> Oh, I mean, I think it's like similar to, you know, all your your eyes, what you Mm -hmm. talked about with the eyes. I think uh, there's probably an equal amount of mouth expression as well. Yeah, that's very true. There are also like mouth shorthands, like Mm -hmm. you'll have the face and you'll have like the mouth just going beyond it. Like, ah! Right. Don't spoil it. Save it for another episode. (laughs) I can do that because- basically at the end of the half hour already yeah (laughs) so a bit more of a chatty episode but no it's a good it's a good lesson on uh you know all the nuances and different ways that um you can express your character and it's Mm -hmm. important to know if you want to you know really uh, have a more developed character Mm -hmm. yeah and at the end of the day there's still that huge range of freedom to figure out just how much you want to like push expressions or push your character designs. Or like, like I already mentioned, like I'm pretty sure I conveyed 
furious decently well, even without like that extra emphasis that other artists may have been able to do much more naturally than I tend to. Mm -hmm. So yeah, the more expressions you do, the more you can start to learn your character and learn which visual cues and shorthands you like to work into your art. And it definitely, yeah, it develops your character even more, make it a much richer, richer character Mm -hmm. in terms of, you know, All right, but in the meantime, that does bring us officially to the end of the half hour. So I hope everyone watching had a good, fairly chill time. My wrist thanks you for it. (laughs) Yeah, get some rest. (laughs) Yeah, I'm so close to getting the project done though. It's one of those things where it's like, ah. Don't don't injure it. I've done it before. Don't do it. No, (laughs) yeah, I'm dreading that. This is the closest I've ever gotten, which is still decently far off. I'm still stretching, but. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. I, I've never had this much time to draw before, and I'm realizing that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but on that note, <laughs> thank you all so much for tuning in. Um, we are the last program that is queued up for today, but we've got a whole bunch of stuff that's happening throughout the week. Um, Debbie and I will be back tomorrow for another art program. Uh, there's story times, there's open labs. There's, um, Debbie, I believe you're doing another program as well with Kasha, aren't not you? This Where you're talk- mm. Not this week. Not this week. Not this week. But tomorrow, Kasha is going to be doing an instant pot program. Yes. So that should be fun. Cool. <laughs> yeah, it should be very fun. But um, as always, the easiest way to keep up with us is at our website at smcl.org. That's the best place for all the easy links to all the cool things that we are doing. And otherwise, I hope you have a great rest of your day and I hope to see you tomorrow. See ya.